All right, guys, it's uh, Ski and Ian here. Um, I am going to be talking to you guys about turbos. I'm going to start off with just explaining turbo basics. Uh, I'm making going to make a set of videos. It's probably going to be more than one part because there's lots to say about turbocharging a car. Um, I'm making these videos because of popular demand. I have a lot of different people that are asking me questions about this kind of stuff so hopefully I can teach more than one person at the same time and I only have to do this once. This is going to be a bit of a complicating video to do because it's kind of a hard topic to explain uh, so kind of bear myth with me with these random edits you're going to see all of a sudden I'm here and then I just keep talking and I'm over here all of a sudden and then Oh my god, we're looking at me. So yeah, I'll do my best because I will be adding stuff in. Anyways, so this is a turbocharger if no one has ever seen one before. Um, this here would be your cold side and this would be your hot side. So here's your turbo here. Here's your cold side, your hot side. What the basic principle of your turbo is, is that it's an air compressor basically that runs off of your exhaust gases so it uses the volume the expanding gases in your exhaust to turn a turbine this side of the turbine which is mechanically connected through the shaft from the hot side this side to the cold side to another turbine that compresses air into your intake otherwise known as boost or boosting a car there's lots of different terms for it so a turbocharger is one of a few types of what they call um, forced induction systems like you can have turbocharging a turbocharger is one of your forced induction systems there's uh, supercharging there's pro charging and I think it's about it. I won't get into supercharging and all that stuff because there's enough to say just on turbos. I might make another video on supercharging and whatever if there's enough people asking me. So air comes into your engine. It's forced in by your turbo, right? Because of the exhaust gases trying to escape turning this wheel that it's compressing so you have the intake air charge being compressed by the turbo going in the intake now normally you have it going through an intercooler to cool the air charge into your engine through the intake it does the whole cycle right um, intake stroke compression stroke power stroke exhaust stroke so the exhaust comes out of here it gets pushed into your turbo now the, the exhaust gases that are coming out of your engine are actually still expanding and it's not just the the wind power from the gases coming out of your engine they're actually still expanding because they're still heating and sometimes in some cases are still burning and they want to force out of the turbo and the only way they can go is through here. This goes to your exhaust. This exits to the you know the back of your car and away. So they turn this turbine, which compresses, which turns this shaft, and that turns the compressor wheel on the cold side, which forces the air in again, and it just keeps repeating and repeating. <clears throat> so the reason why you have an intercooler or charge air cooler, as they're sometimes called is because your turbo heats up right I mean you've got the exhaust coming right in here so the exhaust enters this port here and it goes based on the shape of the turbo it goes in such a way that it creates a spiral which turns that turbine and so the heat generated from there being exhaust going through here transfers a bit over to the cold side and the cold side can actually 
it heats up a bit. It's not actually cold. So what we do is you put an intercooler here to help cool the charge of air coming from the turbo so that you aren't forcing hot air into your engine which can lead to detonation or pinging. Lots of not very fun things. So here's a model of a 2.3 Ford uh, Pinto engine. They're also found in the 1979 to 1980 Ford Mustang and Mercury Capri. Um, probably many other vehicles too, I just can't remember them off the top of my head. Anyways, uh, this is a model I built. It's actually like a see-through model so it has all the moving parts inside. I'll use this just to illustrate some different kind of turbo setups. So I'm going to take some things off so that it's a bit easier to understand and see what's going on. Air filter. Fuel hose. I'm just going to lift this whole intake assembly off. Actually, I have to take off the valve cover. There we go. <clears throat> so, here would be the whole intake assembly. Here would be your carburetor. Uh, here's your turbo. All this part here, that's your turbo. So they just have this shaft so you can spin it to illustrate the actual, actual turbine. So this type of setup is what you would call a suck through or draw through uh, carbureted turbo setup. What happens is, see this is the inlet of your turbo right here and it's actually all the in, all the air is drawn through your carburetor then into your cold side the compressor stage of your turbo and is forced into the intake ports of your engine this is probably one of the most uncommon setups for high boost and uh, horsepower applications because you can't use fuel and air, a fuel and air mixture running through an intercooler because I mean that would be pretty unsafe you have a combustible mixture in your whole uh, intercooler and piping which could possibly explode right and on top of that uh, this setup is you can't even run a blow-off valve because it would be releasing a mixture of fuel and air from the blow-off valve. I'll get into blow-off valves after. Anyways, the uh, more, more common type for carbureted turbo setups is uh, blow-through, which you have to set up your carburetor especially to run, run it because there's pressurized air going through your carburetor. The carburetor would be in between the intake manifold and your turbo. For fuel injected cars you would not see, yeah, you would obviously not have this carburetor here. Your inlet for the turbo, the air intake for the turbo, would be uh, just going to a suitable location in your car, an air filter, uh, preferably before the radiator, uh, hence cold air intake because you're taking air in before it gets heated up by any engine part. Um, and it would be expelled by the turbo, compressed into your piping, your intercooler, whatever you have set up into your or through your throttle body and into your intake manifold where on the runners or at the port you're gonna have injectors 
projectors like this, injecting fuel at every port. Having a fuel injected turbo setup is probably one of the most common turbo setups you'll see today because it offers advantages over horsepower and it's once you get it running you know you you have less maintenance you don't have carbs to clean and rebuild <clears throat> uh, you can inject fuel more accurately it's more efficient and a lot of times the new fuel injection computers also control your spark advance and retard and all sorts of good things like that like launch control variable cam timing everything like that anyways so this so there's many different kinds of turbos you can use there's all different sizes there's uh, you'll have ball bearing and you'll have uh, wet float bearings and you'll have uh, ones that are or just oil cool and ones that are liquid cooled. Usually the ones that have actual bearings in them will be li the liquid cooled ones. Uh, this one I was just showing you before is just a wet float oil cooled turbo. Uh, this is probably the most common type. It's the cheapest ki kind you can get. Uh, it is not the best kind especially when you start to get into uh, higher boost levels because the type of wet float bearing can't take a lot of load, as much load as a ball bearing type turbo could take. And also the good thing about ball bearing turbos is the fact that they actually spool a lot faster because their shafts can spin, you know, the shaft with the two compressor wheels on it, like this one here. This is the shaft, sorry, this is the shaft with the two compressor wheels. So what happens is you'll have a ball bearing right here along that shaft. <clears throat> so back to the crazy creepy looking Asian guy. No, so I don't know who that is. Anyways, uh this is an example of a wet float bearing, like I said before. It only has one inlet and one outlet and it would only be for oil. So there's different turbo sizes you can get as well. There's uh I mean, I think one of the small, smaller ones is a TD25 TD or something like that. Anyways, the most common one you're ever going to find is a T3, T4 hybrid where it's going to have a mixture of two sizes. Like you'll have a, a smaller hot side than you will cold side or even the other way around depending on what your setup is. So here, I just went on eBay to get a, pictures, a picture of a uh, turbo that is internally wastegated. Uh, a wastegate is a way to keep the boost level regulated. So it keeps your manifold pressure uh, at a certain uh, PSI level or bar, wherever you're from. Um, keeps it at a certain pressure. Uh, depending on what spring you have set up in your internal wastegate or like it could be a an internal wastegate like it is here or an external wastegate. I'll show you a picture of an external wastegate after. But uh, basically what an internal wastegate does is when the boost reaches a certain point it opens a flap which bypasses from your the intake from the exhaust. So this is where your exhaust is going in and it bypasses that across the uh, turbine wheel straight into your exhaust, back into your exhaust, which goes uh, to the back of your car, so that it does not spin the wheel anymore on your hot side. It stops the turbo from over spooling, even, but more importantly, it keeps the boost level down, which you want. So, here's a pic of a, an external wastegate. Um, like I said, the purpose of this is to bleed exhaust and bypass your turbo so that it isn't spinning the wheel and creating more boost. So in here you'll have a spring, usually you can change springs and you can actually increase the size or in increase the strength of the spring 
to get a higher boost level and or decrease the spring to get a lower boost level and there's like a valve in here this is where your exhaust is trying to go in from your exhaust manifold and this is where it goes out when the boost level is reached this is where it bleeds to the your exhaust or bypasses the turbo so you want this to go to your exhaust or even what people do is they have it uh, just a pipe going under their car just some way of getting it out of the engine bay